Okay, my fellow media buyers, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we scaled one of our clients at the agency from zero to 4K a day in ad spend. And we did that in just 11 days. I'm gonna be diving inside of the ad account, showing you exactly what we did, what campaigns we ran, and the overall strategy. And no, we didn't just Chad scale it, where we created one campaign as a big CBO, chucked in a lot of creatives, broad targeting, and just let her rip. And you wanna know why I didn't do that? Well, because I am an actual media buyer and actually understand media buying, how the platform works, and how marketing strategy works. Chad scalers who just create large, broad campaigns and chuck a lot of budget behind a lot of creatives are just hoping and praying that they get results without any strategy behind it. Nope, I'm actually a good media buyer and I understand how to test, create, and scale ad accounts. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in today's video. Okay, so just for a bit of context, this campaign was for a lead generation campaign for a big launch that we're doing for the client. So we only had like a two week period for us to run ads and get as many leads as possible for the campaign. So you can see here, I'm in the ad account. And on the 30th of April, 2023, we had zero spend in inside the account, right? Then you go to the 1st of May, 2023, and you can see we basically launched our first set of ads. So we spent, what is that amount spent? We spent 40 bucks, right? Nothing crazy. And then you can see gradually throughout the, the rest of the week, then we were spending 200 a day, we were spending you know, 365 a day, right? And we're starting to get now more leads. Average lead cost is around $3.50. So that's 500 bucks. And we basically by, I believe the 11th, we should have spent you know, $4,400 on, on ads. And on this day, we spent 4.4K. You can see here that we got... 1,039 leads on this day for an average lead cost of $4.30. If you look at the whole campaign as a whole for like the, the first two weeks of the campaign, overall we spent $26,000, generated 6,700 leads, and we got an average lead cost of $3.90, right? And pretty much in any industry right now, $3.90 is a great lead cost, but this is a B2B coaching offer. So pretty competitive. So the fact that we were able to generate that amount, that amount of leads for that little of a cost in such a short time period is a pretty great result. And to spend 26 K within the first two weeks, go from zero to spending 26 K, we got it up to $4,400 a day. We had a very short time period to create, launch, test, and scale the ads whilst ensuring, obviously, we, we kept the low lead cost. So what I'm going to do in this video and right now is show you the strategy in which we were, we were able to do it. So first off, our first phase, basically, of the, the ad account is where we do basically, we call it audience identification, right? audience identification. So this is where the first phase, and we did this probably over like a two to three to four day period, is where we identify the winning audiences. So before the campaign started, I believe we wrote, I think it was like four to five pieces of ad copy, and we had a couple of images, and we had one video to begin with, right? So there, we were just basically, we had the copy, we had a few creatives, not a crazy amount, but a small few creatives. And we basically used those different pieces of copy and the images and the video to basically test the audience. So that's what we want to do in the first phase is we want to identify the audiences that are going to win for this campaign. And you'll be able to see if we go back to like the first couple of days, and then if we go by ad spend, you'll be able to see that all of these campaigns here, none of them, well, this turned into a CBO, but originally it was an ad set budget campaign. 
Um, all of these are campaigns at the ad set budget. And we're basically, you might be able to see here that these are all basically just interest and lookalike campaigns. And we're basically just using different variations of the copy and the creatives to test different audiences. So for example, if we go into one of the campaigns here, you can see within a campaign, we usually have around 10 different interests or 10 different lookalikes. And then we can test the, the different audiences to see which respond well, right? And you can see here that out of the 10, you know, a couple were duds that didn't perform very well. We turned them off. We turned them off before they'd spent even $10. And it's good to note that we test at $5 a day for this campaign. But you can see that some of them we actually identified were pretty good. So for this campaign, anything below $3 was really good. We would also accept anything below $4, but below $3 was the cost that we wanted to get. And you can see here that we identified one, two, three, four, five, six different interests that would work well. And we basically did that for a bunch of different variants of the copy and creatives that I mentioned before. You can see that we had lookalikes as well. So these are different lookalike campaigns. These didn't hit very well. We only really had like one that performed well over those first couple of days. We had another couple of variations here. So you can see here that this started to go well after the first couple of days, you know, three leads, two leads, one leads, all at a pretty cheap cost. And then you can see obviously after that, once we saw that it was working, I'm just gonna bump it up from the first to the sixth day. You can see here that we launched the rest of the interests and then they generally started working. Okay, but it's still average cost per lead $5. So it's not that good. Let's pick another one here. If we go to cost per result, scroll down. Yeah, here we go. So you can see here, this one started working pretty well. You can see we have a ton of leads here for like $1, $3, $2, $3, $1, $1. And we're basically, like I said, just different campaigns, testing different lookalikes, different interests with different variations of like copy images and videos from the initial batch that we created before the campaign. And it's all about identifying hopefully a group of like five to 10 different interests that work consistently across different pieces of copy. And then also again, across different lookalike audiences as well. So that's phase number one. We've basically done that testing phase and we've identified a batch of different audiences that are working well. So the next phase is what we call creative optimization, or you can do it creative testing. You know, this is just the name that we have for it, right? So now we have some audiences that are working well. We also kind of know the, the best performing copy and images and video that we used. Well, in this instance, we only had one video, so we could tell whether that it video worked or not. Um, so basically what we did at this point was we went into the best performing campaigns, say we're like a week in now, and we went to the best performing campaigns and we basically went into, say this one, for example, we looked at the, the different split tests we were doing within the campaign. And this one, for example, there was one video and there was two pieces of copy, right? And we can identify what the best pieces of copy were. And we can also do that with the images as well. If we're testing like three different images, we can see which image is working the best. So then what you wanna do in this phase, if you know an ad cop, like ad copy one is working well, then you can create more pieces of ad copy like ad copy one. Let's just say in this scenario, ad copy one was like pain related, ad copy two was like benefit related, and then ad copy three was like social proof, like it was like a social proof ad. And after the initial test, you can see that ad copy one worked best with the audiences. Then during the creative optimization phase, we would then turn ad copy one into three different variations, right? And then we would go and run the three different variations with the best performing image or video, depending on what ad copy one performed best with. And then we would go and run that to the audiences that we identified in phase one. So phase two, which is creative optimization, that's all about seeing what worked well 
in phase one, which audiences worked well and which ad copy angles worked well. And then it's about creating more creatives based on what worked well in phase one and testing it against the proven audiences. And that's basically what we did. We went here and we just created a load more campaigns. And that's why we have so many different campaigns because now we're testing the best audiences with all the different copy variations along with you know different variations of videos and stuff like that as well. So I believe at this phase, we initially had one video and then we created like three or four more videos based on what we saw was working, like what copy angles was working. We would maybe go and create a video for that as well to just test a load of different variations. Again, going to basically all of the winners from the, the targeting winners from the lookalikes and the interests. So that's phase, phase two. Now, phase three is, and this phase, honestly, we didn't really have that much time to do this. So we didn't do a load of campaigns because obviously we only had 14 days to basically scale this thing. So we kind of skipped phase three out. But if we had a longer time horizon, then I would include phase three and I would do it more heavily. And this is what we basically call demographic dialing, right? So this is where we're dialing in the demographics of the audience. And basically what I do is I will then look at phase one and two, and then I will filter inside the ad account on the best performing campaigns. And I will look at age, I will look at gender, and I look at potentially like placements, right? And there's a few other things you can test. Countries as well is another one if you're targeting different countries. And I will look at the best performing campaign and I will filter one age range. And if there is an age range that has performed well, then I will duplicate all the winning ad sets into a new campaign, just targeting that age range. Let me see if I can show you an example. So we had one here, you might be able to see this, you might not, but this is basically targeting 22 to 34 year olds. And it was targeting an interest campaign with a video. So I'm going to type in AV4. So this is the demographic dialing campaign where we're targeting 22 year olds to 34 year olds. And this was the original campaign that we created it from. So basically what I would have done in this phase, because this campaign was working really well, you can see within the first week, we've only spent $275, but we've got 83 leads at average cost per lead of $3.32. And we have a ton of different ad sets that are obviously getting leads. So at this point, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to break it down by age. And basically what I would have done is I would have analyzed all of the cheapest ads. And I believe I identified 22 to 34 as the best age range, right? So you would look at all of this and I don't want to go through each one on this video because I don't want it to go on too long, but basically that's the, the gist of it, right? And all of the ad sets in this campaign that was working well to ages, you know, 20, 22 to 34 or 24 to 34, I would have selected them all. And then I'm just duplicating them in a new campaign. And the only difference is that I'm just targeting that particular age range. And you can see here that this campaign did fairly well. It started off pretty well again, $3.42. So that's basically what we do with the demographic dialing. Now, I didn't have that much time to do that phase in this campaign, right? And if I was to do it, I would have gone through all of the best performing campaigns and basically duplicated the best performing ad sets into different age ranges, campaigns with different genders, different placements, different countries, et cetera, et cetera. But again, limited for time. So we couldn't do like an extensive phase three, but we did it a tiny bit, but then basically we got into the last week and I was like, right, we've got enough performing campaigns here. Let's just scale it. If my campaigns weren't getting such cheap leads, then maybe I would have done phase three for a little bit longer to try and find the best combinations. But the fact of the matter is we were one week into the campaign at this point, we'd only spent three K but like it was firing, right? The average cost per lead was $3.33. It was killing it, right? So we didn't really need to do stage three to try and like get the cost per lead lower. We were doing very well. So at this point, I just thought we've got a week left. Let's just scale this thing. So that moved us on to basically phase four. And phase four 
is what we call CBO for scale. So our strategy here is we analyze all of the campaigns, every single one, all the campaigns from whatever phase, right? And we basically go within each campaign. And if we can find two to four ad sets that are performing well within one campaign, then we will duplicate them into a CBO campaign. And that's exactly what we did here. So all of these, which are ad set budget campaigns, these are basically all the campaigns from phase one to phase three. Then we go inside of here and we filter obviously on cost per result and we look at the cheapest ones. And we, if we can go into an account, so let's just say we were into this one and you can see this is a female campaign. I don't know, it might be blurred out probably, but um, this is a female campaign. So this was from demographic dialing, right? Where we were just targeting females. And at this point, one week in, we're looking at these numbers and you can see here that we have one, two, three, we actually have four ad sets that are within KPI, right? Four ad sets that are getting leads for less than $3. So what I'm going to do probably is select four of these. I actually prefer free. Free is a sweet spot. Or maybe we could have done two each and we could have created two CBO campaigns. But let's just say for this one, I'm going to create these four. I'm going to duplicate them into a CBO campaign. And what you will find is that we did the CBO budget for 100 a day. So you'll be able to see here, here are all, all of our scaling campaigns. The average is around $100, maybe somewhere $150 because we were trying to scale really hard. We could, that is basically our strategy. And you can see that we have a ton of campaigns going. Like if we type on CBO, <clears throat> add certain name campaign, can name CBO. These are all the CBO campaigns for just this campaign, right? Just this campaign. You can see that we had a total of 41 scaling CBO campaigns. And let's just move it on from that to 14. So you can see here, so in total for the CBO campaigns, we spent 20K in the space of really seven days because, you know, the first seven days, let's have a look at this, sorry, from one to seven. Yeah, we didn't spend anything in CBO campaigns. So from like eight to 14, we spent 20 grand within a week, right? And this was just because we had to aggressively scale in the fourth phase. So here we spent around 20K on CBO campaigns, scaling them. And obviously with scale, you're not going to get the same cost per lead, but it was still pretty good. We got an average cost per lead of $4.15. And if we go inside each of these, you will see there's around two to four different ad sets per CBO. And that's basically all we do. We just go through all of the campaigns from phase one to phase three. If we can find one to two ad sets, that, sorry, two to four ad sets that are working well, we're just going to duplicate them into a CBO campaign and we put our cost, um, our average CBO budget at around $100. Now, depending on how aggressively you want to scale, we typically do $100. The reason why we do $100, we usually do actually between $50 to $100. And that's a lot lower than what most people will do for a CBO. And the reason why is because of the way that the Facebook ad auction works. Now, I don't have time to go through that in that video. The way it works is it's fairly complicated, but once you understand it, it all makes complete sense. I did another video just like this that explained the, the equation basically on how to leverage the audience to scale more cheaply. And you can watch that video. Maybe I'll link it somewhere. Maybe you can find it at the end. Not too sure. But that video is on my channel where I actually explain how the auction works and how you should actually set your budgets based on the Facebook ad auction. But that's the reason why we do usually between $50 to $100. Here, obviously, we were trying to scale aggressively in like a seven-day period. So that's why we did $100, $150. And then even some of the really cheap campaigns, we went up to $300. But if it was like an evergreen campaign where I didn't need to aggressively scale, then I would do between 50 to $100. Like I said, you can watch that video where I explain why. But that's pretty much all we do. We're just continually testing between phase one and phase three, right? This is pretty much all our testing campaigns here. And then as soon as basically the ad sets have been running for like four to five days and we've got two to four ad sets in one campaign that are within KPI, we will then just chuck them into a CBO 
and we will scale that way. And the thing is, if this is an evergreen campaign, we're constantly launching more audience identification campaigns, more creative optimization, more demographic dialing. So you're constantly launching more into this pool of one to three phases. So then they can supply the pool of CBO campaigns that are scaling because obviously eventually some of these CBO campaigns will die out. So you don't just want to put all your budget into phase four. You want to constantly putting some of your budget into phase one to three so that when the CBO campaigns do die out, you will then have more ad sets ready to go and launch with CBO campaigns. So that's it. That's the four part framework we use to scale our clients ad accounts at the agency. Let me know in the comments below if you like this style of content. I honestly never know how deep or specific to get with the, the ad content. Do you like me going inside the ad accounts and you know showing you step by step the strategy or do you just want me to act like a bit of a twat on camera and talk more high level stuff. But if you like this type of content, like I said, let me know and I will in the future create more content like this where it's more case study style, more detailed, more specific and show you exactly what we're doing on a day to day basis with our clients account. And yeah, if you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon.